and welcome to Beyond the Basics. Uh, I'm filming, uh, filling in for Ben Feingold tonight. He's at Cortex doing a simul, uh, so he'll be back for the, the class at 7.30, um, but for this time I'll be, be filling in. And uh, this is Beyond the Basics, which is a, a beginner course that's sort of meant for you know how the pieces move, at least in theory, but in practice, like FMs come to this class and really strong players come. Uh, so it's really sort of a mix, and we're going to throw it on the internet, and there'll be a whole mix of rating ranges and whatever. So uh, today I thought we'd go over some really quick games, some games that ended quickly, miniatures. And um, I had something prepared, and then it was on a different computer, and now everything's lost. So my backup plan, which is actually my backup backup plan, is to go over this list that I was given. It's 50 great games. Um, so I guess I'll let the audience just pick a number and we'll go over a great game. We'll see how great they are, see if, uh, see if that's really true. Um, so with that in mind, does anyone have a number between 1 and 50? 42. 42. All right, I hope it's a good one. All right, so this will be the first game. Yeah, it's 42. All right, so we'll go over this, this game. It's a quick one. This is uh, Bardish Jenin from 1948. So... I think most of these are E4 openings, but this one is a D4. So we got D4, D5, and now E4. Hmm. So we got, is it going to be a Black Mardemer? So in this position, uh, Knight C3, F3 also is another way to continue in, in gambiting spirit. Maybe that'll happen in just a second. Um, and so that does happen, so we get the Black Mardemer. And after this takes, there are actually two ways to take back. Um, knight takes is the more popular, but in this game, the queen took on f3. Uh, and, and black just decided to take the pawn, which you're not supposed to be able to do, so we'll, we'll see why. <clears throat> um, OK, so the first move here, he attacked the queen. The queen went to b4. Uh, and I guess what would you guys play in this situation? So your, your B pawn is attacked. Queenside castle. Castle queenside, excellent. That was what was played. And all right, now the bishop went to g4. And I believe this is called the Holosar trap. Um, there's a trap associated with this. So here, white actually has a, a really strong move. At knight b5, which threatens mate. So obviously, if you take. Uh, when you get checkmated. So the rook is doing a great job. So let's see what happened. In this game, the move played was e5. Um, OK. That, it's legal. <clears throat> All right, how would you guys uh, continue here with white? Because I think another way that. Queen takes bishop, queen, seven, queen, uh, takes queen takes here? Yes. OK, very interesting. So you're attacking the rook. It's good enough. It's good enough? It does, does appear good enough. How will I defend? Maybe I can go here? But then knight c7. Yeah, so whatever, if wherever you move your knight, Unless you move your knight with check. You can also move knight b6. Bishop like, c5 to kill a check. Like oh, yeah. This is, yeah, that's a pretty strong move. OK, yeah, so we're noticing there's some, some issues here. Uh, in the game, Bardish Jenin won 42 games. Yeah, so we're noticing there's some issues here. In the game, he chose to go in for this check immediately. Yeah. It can't be bad. And uh, only now, this move is very nice. It was, a, it was quite a nice. Little finishing move here. Uh, who can find the, the last little idea? So it has to do with uh, just take the bishop. Just take the bishop. It's protected twice. Uh, I don't know. However, I want. Okay, so your point is if I take with the king, you're going to fork me? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of what I was looking at. I 
and okay, but I guess I kind of have to, right? Because if mm -hmm. okay, so that's interesting. Um, so this also is a good idea. Yeah, with just with the point that you're going here, and then I I move somewhere and you take my queen. Okay, and so it looks like you you are up a piece. Uh, the game also finished on a, a very nice note, a slightly more tactical move that does have to do with this point that was illustrated earlier. Uh, if we can play bishop to c5 and the queen's not there, so all we need to be able to do is, is put a bishop here. So in the game, uh, it continued. Yeah, queen takes b7. And then you can't take this, but he took this. And so now we see the point. Bishop to c5, checkmate. OK, so that was... Uh, it's a very nice little game. Um, this is the, the Holosar trap. Um, yeah, I don't really know the, the entire thing, but it's supposed to be even if you fall in for it and then you play with best play, you're, not, you're probably just like the normal, worse or bad, but it's the way this ended up, uh, you just got checkmated rather quickly here. OK, 1 to 50, but not 42. 13, OK. Lucky number 13. All right, so this is Teed Delmar from New York, 1860, or 1896. Okay. What's the fastest way? No. Okay, and we got another D4 game. Yeah, maybe you'll just pick all the D4 ones. It's like, I was looking at them, like, there's like 20 games to start a D4. But, okay. We got the Dutch. There's a lot of ways to go wrong immediately when you play the Dutch, so it should be interesting. Uh, we got this interesting line, and now the move h6. And so there are some problems you can run into based on the fact that sometimes this queen can come out here. Um, a mistake would be to play here thinking, okay, after you take my bishop, I can play here checkmate, because after they take, it would be checkmate, I mean, but only they can take here, you know, so, yeah. So uh, in this game, I think we can understand why he went back. Well, he went to f4. Uh, you also could have gone back to h4. And after this, um, he, mm, he loses the bishop, huh? Yeah, so what is, what's going on here? Okay, so e3 was played. The point being uh, you take checkmate. Okay, so this is, yeah, black isn't supposed to be able to do this. This is a normal line. Um, and I've seen even, there was a master in this club that fell for this, this sort of trap. I don't know if it was exactly this move order. I think knight c3 must have been thrown in there somewhere. But it was the same sort of thing where it, it worked, so you know, even even some pretty strong players have fallen for this trap. Uh, and so Black decides h5 to get this thing like over here. All right, so now I've taken away your option of queen h5 because now that that square is protected. And okay, I'm still hoping I can just get your bishop. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so somebody said maybe queen to d3, and immediately somebody said, what about bishop to d3? Either one or yeah, either one. So this is the one that was played. Uh, so now, again, the point, uh, hopefully everybody sees that if you, you take this, the point is checkmate. And so black went here, which seems to, to land him in a, in a bit of trouble. Yeah, so queen takes pawn. Excellent, yeah. Queen takes, rook takes. Checkmate. Excellent. So an excellent finish. And it is sort of a model uh, example of what happens when you push all of your pawns, especially your F pawn. You can get into lots and lots of trouble along this diagonal. Um, and so it's always very nice when you get to sacrifice a queen. <laughs> so here's the queen sacrifice forces you to come off of this diagonal so the bishop can swoop in and deliver a checkmate. 19. All right. All right, so this is the game between Menko and Jankowitz from 1900. Okay, so this is our first E4 game. 
Welcome, Arjun. E4, E5. We're going over miniatures today. Uh, this looks like black is going to win because I saw the next move. So we'll flip the board. <clears throat> In this position, white played knight to E2, the Alapin opening. So he played this a few times. Um, not the best, but not the worst you can do. All right, bishop to C5. F4. So it seems sort of strange, and again, we, we got another game where they move their f-pawn early, so will the answer be something bad happens on this diagonal? That will that will find out. Uh, but in combination with the move f4, I mean, the knight just really would rather be on f3, where you're protecting some of these dark squares like h4 and g5. Uh, okay, so this is a, a rather unique position so early on. And now uh, another interesting move. And I say interesting, not good. Uh, queen to f6. So I suppose the point is, if here, which which way do you want to checkmate? Um, okay, so uh, white obviously can't take. Instead, white tried c3. c3, that, that's what happened. <laughs> so uh, maybe he's just going to try to play a quick d4, blunt the bishop. Um the audience isn't believing it. <laughs> All right, knight to c6. So I'm protecting d4 like a thousand times. So if you play d4, I could probably take it a thousand times. Uh, so instead, g3. And knight h6. Bishop g2. Knight g4. Okay, so now we're threatening to come into f2, and white decided, well, you can't castle, uh, so he decided to go here, which obviously undefends the h-pawn. Don't worry, these are all 50 great games, so I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a great finish here for one side. <laughs> yeah, right, not 50 elo rated games. Okay. Okay. But now here, okay, very interesting, very interesting. And now, okay, this is a great finish. So here's the position we got. Queen takes rook, fantastic. Yeah, knight f3, checkmate. Excellent, so the, the two minor pieces, whoop, the two minor pieces working together to uh, deliver the checkmate in this position. So yeah, a very, very funny finish. Um, so this was the big mistake, taking here. If you don't take back, then you're, you're just still doing bad. But you were doing bad before. Um, okay, perhaps you could just move back and, and repeat, but now you don't have an H-pawn. But you didn't get checkmated. So this probably would have been a better way to, to continue. But okay, a very nice one. All right, we got Arjun here. Arjun, give me a number between one and 50. Number six. Okay. Number six. <clears throat> okay, this is a very famous one. <clears throat> this is Legal versus St. Brie from 1750. So presumably this will be a Legal's checkmate. Um, okay, so here we have the moves e4, e5, knight f3, d6, and instead of the normal move d4, there's also this, this other aggressive move, bishop to c4, which uh, I've sometimes been playing, and I, there was a co-worker here, he doesn't work here anymore, but he would always tell me, like, you know, Legal's mate, why even teach that to kids, that never happens, don't, you know, don't even try, and so then I've just been playing it this way, because I, you know, I play a lot of beginners, um, and I've gotten it two or three times already. So I've gotten it on the internet. I got it here in the club. Like the day he said nobody would ever fall for it, I played it the very first game. Like I got this checkmate. So and there's a couple different ways you can fall for it, but uh, it does happen. So it, it it does make sense to to learn about it. So after here, which is not really the most accurate move, um, normally you want to wait for White to castle before you decide to put your bishop here. That way I'm never really thinking about playing H3 and G4. Uh, so you know, a, a better move would just be to develop one of your one of your knights to the normal squares. Uh, 
this is actually like the main move here. <clears throat> so let's see. So this happened, and the knight goes here. So here you have the trio that you need for this checkmate to work. Uh, and now all you need is for black to play a move that doesn't protect the d5 square. So you can play here, here, you know, some sort of random move here. Uh, in the game, this move was played. And now, uh, do we see the, the, the best move here? Yeah. Knight e5, excellent. Um, and so you should probably be suspicious if you're playing somebody and they play knight e5. Uh, so you should try to see why would they give away their queen. But that didn't happen in this game. But if you decide instead just to take this knight, then you're only down a pawn. Your position is still bad. White's, White's doing really well. But uh, the big trick is, whoops, so what happens if they, they go ahead and they just grab this queen? You see the whole thing? Bishop f7, and okay, I only have one square, and as Arjun said, knight d5. So this is Legal's checkmate. Uh, there are a lot more modern examples too where things are a little bit more complicated, but this is the, uh, the original game where this, this model uh, checkmate occurred. So very good, Arjun. You, you asked for number six, and you knew the answer right away. Brilliant. All right, one to 50. Twenty-four. All right, the very last one on the page here. Okay. So here we have e4, knight f6, e5, knight d5, so an alakine. Uh, and we get perhaps the chase variation. So it is possible to play the move c4. This is uh, the move Nakamura played against me in a simul. Um, so that's... That is possible, and it's, it is kind of tricky. But uh, instead, d4, and after d6, you have two options. Although, looking at this, apparently there's a third. Um, and it is white that's going to win. The two main options are play to, to play the four pawns attack, or you can play the exchange variation. And both should be pretty good for white. Um, I mean, the exchange is actually a good way to try to get an initiative, uh, an advantage as white. And you can capture with either pawn, and you get different positions. When I was playing the Alakine, because I used to play this all the time, which is why I played it against Nakamura, is uh, I always would love it when they would play the four pawns attack. It is kind of what you're hoping for when you play the Alakine. You're giving them the center, and then you hope that they go crazy and create a lot of weaknesses that you can exploit later. But in this game, we see a, a unique move that I'm not aware of, which is bishop to d3, but uh, it, it's all going to work out. So it only, it's only a few more moves. It looks like it all is, it's all going to work out. Takes, takes. Uh, knight from 8 to d7. And now uh, what's the most aggressive move here? e6, yeah. With the point that if you take... How, which wasn't played. Yeah, yeah but you'd be this, this queen check. Yeah. You can block. Okay. Either, queen. Yeah, queen takes, obviously. Okay. Obviously the prettier choice. Uh, okay. So this is how the game should end. Okay, but that did not happen. He apparently saw that much. So the knight went here. Yes, excellent. Yeah. And in this position, as it was mentioned, uh, you can, yes. Bishop g6, excellent. And uh, you're walking away with the queen. So yeah, whatever, however you, you want to take back. Bloop. And uh, the game, so the game ended in this position. So okay, fantastic. Uh, this is the game between Wren Mayfield, 1941. Uh, so yeah, this is also a, a sort of a classic deflection. And this happens a lot when you have a, a king on you know e8 and a queen on d8. Often, uh, usually it's like a bishop or something that might distract it. You can imagine that the bishop's on c4 and that takes on f7. And if the king takes back, you take the queen. That sort of deflection occurs very often. Though this one was pretty because it was sort of a double deflection. You had to use your pawn to initially get the king out of the way. And then you needed to follow up with your bishop uh, to deliver a check that unleashed a, a discovered attack on the queen. All right. Very good.
One to 50. 50. 50. All right. Number 50. This is Holzhausen versus Tarash from 1910. And I know, hmm. So I know Tarash's name, but he's not the victor. Man, hmm, interesting. I was ready to just flip the board, but uh, all right, this is, this is how it is. I guess, let's see. All right, got a little Philidor. And then will it be uh, Legal's mate? Probably not. Takes, uh, and he plays the exchange variation, not the only way. Um, and you can actually take with, with both pieces here, taking with the queen. But normally in lines where you take with the queen, uh, you haven't moved your bishop yet, so that the point is you can pin here and just keep developing as quickly as possible. So taking with the knight makes the most sense. Knight f6. Knight c3, knight c6. All right. So how is this all going to end? Castles, castles. So far, they're playing just fine. H3. Rook e8. Rook e1. Somebody lost this game quickly. <laughs> the most boring game? <laughs> What do you mean? This rook moved, and now we're attacking f7. You know, that might matter. All right. And now you're putting your knight in front of your pieces. All right. So, yeah, let's see. Yeah, so now it's interesting. So what would you guys play in this position? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this also is a, a very famous game, too. Um, So I assume if you play here, which has been suggested, um, I guess I can play here. Yes, but you have even better. Excellent. All right, good job, Arjun. Bishop f7. Um, this is actually a really famous game. So, yeah, so, we've, so somebody said here, I assume... Assume I can go back or I can attack you, but. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. But I'm also in trouble if I go back. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's... Arjun, can you come teach this class for me? Because it's, <laughs> it's too hard. You'd have to be beyond the basics. All right. So, excellent. Uh, so there is there is better in this position, which I think somebody had already mentioned. Knight e6, excellent. So just threatening to take the queen, and if we take here, some kind of mate, excellent. Next game. Yeah, we need Arjun. Arjun, help me out. Queen d5, and now queen f5, excellent. A brilliant checkmate. Um, yeah. So what made this this possible? is a combination of you boxing in your own queen <laughs> and me having active pieces. He was good, Trash, he was great. So all these openings named after him, he's great. Yeah, I guess, yeah, he wanted to bring his knight out. That was Tarash. Yeah, this is actually quite a famous game, so. Number one. Number one. <laughs> All right, this is Taylor versus Amateur uh, from London, 1862. Betting You're betting on Amateur? I don't like your odds. I, yeah. <laughs> All right, it was knight f6. And, uh, okay, so the, normally they take on e5. Uh, this also can lead to some, some great complications. So let's go ahead and look at this. Um, this is the Bowden Koritsky gambit. Does anyone agree with that? All right. Um, okay, so in this position, knight to c5, normally they take, and you get some good compensation in the fact that you're, you're much more developed. Um, but in the game, he decided to move his knight again, because that's, that's how he rolls, I guess. 
And that was an amateur, yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't like your odds either. All right, and you're not going to like your odds after this move either. You're not going to like your odds. <laughs> right, Arjun, can you blunder here? Help me blunder. Excellent. Good job. <laughs> not only can you find the right good moves, you can find the right bad moves. So very good. Very good. All right. Who's got, who's got the move here? No, it's, it's a great game. It's a great game. <clears throat> yeah. You want to say bishop check? I assume he would play here. And then your knight's attacked, and your bishop's attacked. And then I hope you move your knight away, and I take your bishop. <laughs> Yeah, that, so that wasn't played. Yeah. Where are you going? Knight D5 check. No problem. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah. So in this initial position, we got the answer now. Uh, yeah. This this move looks pretty strong. All right. So if knight takes pawn, uh, I get one turn to defend. Can I do it? Uh, I can't. It's been claimed that I can't. Not well. <laughs> Not well. Look at that defense. Look at this. All right, fine. Fine. Mate. Whoops. Ooh, computer thinks you should put your knight there. That's, yeah, computer thinks you should put your knight there. So this actually wasn't played, though. Like, everything looks like it's probably winning here. But uh, yeah, it says, this is ungood for one of them. But look, you got two pieces hanging. Like, that's terrible. All right, instead here, with, all right, so the idea that we've, we've sort of seen. Um, uh, uh, so, yeah, just keep going this way. Whoa. Just keep going this way. Just keep. You played one of these? What side were you? I was the other side. You, you were black in this position? Oh, yeah. Okay, but then here we have A4 novelty. <laughs> and after this capture. Check. That wouldn't be cool. And it would, rook up would be check, but it wouldn't be checkmate. Who can find the checkmate in one move? You'd have to follow my rule, Arjun. Yeah, always play queen d1. The best example of always play queen d1. So, uh, this, is, this is much prettier. Much prettier. And that's, that's not checkmate, right? Because I can block. I can block. Yeah, yeah, queen d1, much better. Uh, yeah, very, very pretty finish to that game. Um, we'll do two more. We'll do two more. Who's got a number? Yes. Number two. Do we do number two? No. All right, I believe it. We didn't do it. d4, d5, c4, e6. Queen's Gambit declined. A hard opening to lose in only six moves. Very, very solid. <laughs> All right. Knight c3, c5. Get a little Tarash. Well, we know how well Tarash has done so far this lecture, so it's not a good sign. All right. Bishop f4, c d. All right. And now what is the next move? How do you lose in two moves? Yeah. That's tough. Okay. All right. Knight to b5. Uh, I assume I'd play here. And then you probably won't lose on your next move. No. All right. <laughs> you, you, not yeah, not bad enough. enough. Not bad enough. Does this make more sense? Let's relive it as the black pieces. Let's relive it. All right. So we're just we're just crushing it here as black. All right. You're not going to be happy with the finish. You're not going to be happy <laughs> with the finish. This takes. 
takes. Resigns. Everybody satisfied with that? Uh, so I suppose the point is if you go here, what's Black's move? Yeah. And you only have one good. Well, you can block this way if you want to lose more stuff. But you'd have to play here. So, all right, everybody satisfied with that? It was great. You loved it? That was a. Uh, Amateur, that should have been our first hint, versus Bruning from Berlin, 1907. All right, let's do one more. Let's pick, pick a really good one this time. Come on. 32. Which one? 32? 32. All right. Got a, got a little 10 mover here. This is Schiffer versus Janning from Budapest, 1898. All right. Let's make sure we know who's going to... Gonna win this one. All right, so it's, it's gonna be black winning with checkmate in 10 moves. All right. e4, e5. Knight f3, knight c6. Little bishop e2. Okay, not the, uh, not the most aggressive, but legal, legal. All right. And now white plays for a little trick. So he plays the fork trick. So he took here. The point being that if you take back, we fork you. Um, black sensed that, and he decided to play, OK, I'll, I'll take here first. And only now did he take back. Um, I don't know, this is probably good for white, though. But it's almost over. All right. So d4. And then what did black play? A little check. And I assume you can just go back with the king, but he decided to play here. Yeah, knight to g4. And you ready for it? What? Nice. Um, there appear to be alternatives. Uh, I'm not sure what he's what he's worried about. If he just goes back here, what is he worried about? Developing his rook eventually. Yeah, right, right. You got to be able to develop your rook. You don't want to step in front of your rook. Just go out to g3. What could be what could be safer? Threatening king takes knight. All right. Instead of taking with the bishop for some reason. All right. So continue as black. H5, h4 has been suggested. It's not going to help him. No. Eh, it's not going to help him. All right, h5, h4 was on the order. Yes, yes, gotcha. I, I just took your piece. Oh, uh, yep, I'm feeling pretty good here as white. D4. D6 was played. And obviously not D4, but D5 also was played. Um, yeah, somehow the king ran out and got checkmated. Who, who, who would have thought? Who would have thought? But now here, this is the most important position of the, the whole lecture here. Which is the prettiest checkmate? Very important. Sacrificing the queen. Sacrificing the queen? You, you can play d6 or d5. Who thinks d6 is the prettier move? Just, oh, two? Three, four? Who thinks d5 is prettier? That's what it's tempting to take. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Here, just for just for Ben Simon, we'll turn it all the way up. Oh. Oh, can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. All right. Well, uh, all right. That was pretty fun. Some of those were great games. Some of those were so-so games. Um, but okay. In general, these watching these miniatures are usually very entertaining. Uh, so I would encourage you, if you wanted to on your own, just go search for uh, miniatures that you can just watch on your own. They do generally tend to reflect 
sort of the basic themes where you can get into trouble really fast, such as in some of them we saw you move your F pawn too early, you know, bad stuff happens to you on that diagonal. And it reveals a lot of things that occur even later on in the games. Uh, they're just sort of model examples of how you can get into the most trouble as fast as possible. Okay.